Spellbound begins with Jessica escaping miraculously. Jason intercedes and brings her back into the house, rolls her up in a blanket, and closes the door and brings her back into the vampire holding cell. Now they're on a somewhat level playing field because they've both saved each other's life. When she gives Jason her blood, she becomes deeply attached to him. Obviously, Jessica thought Jason would be available to her, which uh, it's not quite that easy because Hoyt's Jason's best friend. No, I don't want any part of this. Jason, I know you feel the same way. It's like my blood that's inside you. It talks to me. You got to get out of here. I really loved writing the two scenes with Hoyt and Jessica. It's done in a kind of a great way because Jessica first dreams the breakup. You deserve someone better than me. <laughs> better than you. I want you. It's not Hoyt, per se. If I can't have you, I don't want to be alive. It's her idea of what she thinks Hoyt must be like without her, or what a part of her wishes he was like so that it would be easier to leave him. The second scene is really brutal. This whole time, I've been sticking up for you. I've been getting beat up for you. And you know what? You don't deserve me. It's really, really brutal. And the things he says to her, I think it's going to be hard to come back from that. I deserve someone who's not going to be a virgin for all of eternity. Suki realized how much she didn't want Eric to die during uh, the time when the spell was taking place. She makes the decision afterwards to offer her blood to help him heal. And surprisingly, he offers her his. And she's a little confused because she's like, I'm not injured. And he's like, come on, it will be, will be one. They drink each other's blood, which is for humans, like Suki, intoxicating to drink a vampire's blood. And for vampires to drink oh. Suki's blood, who's part fairy, it also has a, a very stimulating effect. So they sort of go on this V-trip together. And have a little moment of bliss in a sort of imagined Scandinavian forest. They may not use the I love you words, but they do realize that the feelings they have for each other are very strong and very profound. Loving you? Possible. However, on True Blood, you basically get one episode <laughs> before everything goes to hell. The end of episode eight is probably the biggest fight we've had on this show. I come in peace. Do you? I think now there is no question uh, for the vampires what exactly they are up against. They are really faced with an adversary who can do serious damage to them and wants to. And not only wants to do it to a handful of them, she would like to see all vampires eradicated. Bill has to confront her and has to try to appease her because he, he knows that a war is going to, as he says in the episode, it's going to create a lot of needless death on both sides. Bill sort of offers her an olive branch and the promise of peace between the vampires and the Wiccans. But he doesn't trust her. She doesn't trust him. And of course, as we see by the end of the episode, there's not going to be a peaceful solution to this. Marnie, who is now Antonia, is able to take Eric at a point when he really just wants to run off and have a life with Suki and turn him into her slave. So God only knows what he's going to be up to in the next few episodes, but he's not there for Suki. That guy, you know, that sweet, innocent Eric, he's not there anymore. Suki gets shot. Well, you know, as they say, uh, before they go to war, we could die, we could all die. And um, war has casualties. And uh, just being the, you know, the lead character doesn't save you necessarily. <laughs>